Okay, everybody. Um, I have some real scriptures for you here now, okay? So, um, this is entitled, The Power Over Darkness, The Enemy is Defeated, Scriptures to Stand On. To ignore this spiritual warfare happening is naive. I know I've done it. There is a real adversary out there who wants you depressed, anxious, and suicidal. We don't need to be preoccupied with the enemy, but we do need to be aware of his schemes so that we can stand against him, like how we're opening portals. There are going to be times when it seems dark, when it seems darkness is creeping in. In those times, pull out God's word and begin to take authority over the powers of darkness by turning on the light. And so what you would need to do is these um, verses I'm going to give you, you say them out loud in an authoritative tone to these demons, okay? These scriptures are not just here for my readers. They're here for me. Here is something personal about me. My name is Leslie, means darkness. For the longest time, I was totally in darkness, but I know now that God has rescued me from the darkness and transferred me to the kingdom of his son. Colossians 1.13. Power over darkness verses. Here we go. So you guys can listen to this over and over again and write them down. And so understand when you start feeling anxious, you understand where that's coming from. When you start having thoughts of suicide, of hurting yourself, you understand where that's coming from. You take out these Bible verses and you say them out loud with authority. And after every one, just keep saying, in Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty name. And we're, com we're commanded by Jesus that we all have the authority to, to command these demons out. So you say, with authority... I command you out of this form. This is not your home. You do not live here. You are not welcome here. Get out. Up and out. Up, up, up and out. Out. In Jesus' mighty name. And you've got to go through all of those uh, soul ties, generational uh, curses. Um, the Jezebel and Ahab. All those things that I put up there for you by Pastor Mike, you've got to go through all of that and break all those things. Word curses, you've got to do the work. As always, you've got to do the work. And if you continue listening to fake demons like that one over there, she's going to pull you further and further into the darkness. This is why I just went and got these verses for you guys, because I know you're going to need them if you don't already need them. So these are the power over darkness verses. James chapter 4 verse 7. Resist the devil and he will flee. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Ephesians 6.11. Put on God's armor. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. What is the devil's schemes? Telling you that whatever's in the Bible doesn't matter. Telling you that it doesn't matter that the Bible says that tarot cards are, are an abomination before God. It doesn't matter. You can still do them. Well, well that's, what the, that's one of the devil's schemes, okay? Ephesians 6, 13, put on all of God's armor. I don't know if I read this one already. No, I read uh, 6, 11. <coughs> this is 6, 13, put on all of God's armor. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. 1 Peter 5, 8. Stay alert. There's an enemy. Stay alert. There's an enemy. 
You guys, I really, I, I wish I can get it through to you. This is not a joke. This is not just energy like these people out there are talking. These are real spirits. And their only job is to hurt you and get you away from God. It's their only job and they're real. That, that fake over there is an absolute abomination before God for what she's doing. She's an absolute abomination. First Peter 5, 8, stay alert, there's an enemy. Stay alert, watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. 1 Peter 5, 9, stand firm in faith. Resist him, standing firm in your faith and in the knowledge that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. John 16, 11, the ruler of this world is judged because the ruler of this world hath been judged. Who is the ruler of this world? What did I explain to you yesterday? There's the God of all creation and there's the God of the earth realm, the lower realms, which is Satan. It's what I said to you yesterday. And so what did John say? Because the ruler of this world, the earth realm, <coughs> hath been judged. Hebrews 2.14, Jesus made the devil powerless. Therefore, since the children share, the, share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise also partook of the same, that though death, he might render powerless him who had the power of death, that is the devil. Jesus is the only way that you will ever defeat Satan. And I want to tell you something here. You see, when, when uh, Nithya Ananda sent this demon here to me, um, I, I didn't know what this was. I, I, I just really did not know what it was. And um, I, I kept asking people out here to help me. Does anybody know what this is? Now, I don't know if nobody knew what it was, but because of the way I had been treated out here, I was taking it that nobody was just going to help me. Nobody was going to help me. And... Um, so one person reached out to me to, to help me, and it wound up being a Nithyananda goon. And what this person said to me was, uh, cover yourself in the blood of Jesus, get rid of all of your books and all of your uh, Hindu gods. And he literally told me the right things that I needed to do. And because I thought... He was just making fun uh, out of Christianity because that's all that ever stuck in my head was Nithya Nanda bashing Christians. Um, the one thing that I did take from what he said, I didn't get rid of the Hindu gods because I saw Muji had the, the Shiva. I um, can't even think of the name of it now. I saw Muji had the Shiva thing there and I said, wait a second, that's all religion. I transcend a religion. What is this person talking about? And then I said, I'm not throwing out my, all my, uh, my Nisargadatta books and everything that I was, I, I've been studying for the past seven years. What is going on here? And, uh, but the one thing that I did take from what that goon said was I started covering myself with the blood of Jesus. And no matter what I did, I would try to just keep moving in the bed so this thing would stop attacking me. And... Um, I would, I would put a pillow between my legs and just like tighten up my legs so this thing couldn't touch me. And uh, nothing worked until I started covering myself in the blood of Jesus. Then this thing started leaving me alone. I, I saw it firsthand happen in my own life. And I'm telling you, Jesus is the only way to defeat Satan. The only way. That's why you cannot be lukewarm about this. You cannot be lukewarm. 
You cannot be of the world. Who rules the world is Satan. Jesus is the only way that you're going to defeat Satan. Period. And I know this firsthand. I lived it. Romans 16, 20, God will crush Satan under your feet. God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. May the grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. Colossians 2, 15, Jesus made a public spectacle of the devil. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing, triumphing over them by the cross. Second Corinthians 2 Corinthians 2.11, don't be ignorant of Satan. And I've been saying this all along. You all understand me. You heard me. Satan's greatest accomplishment was making the whole world believe that he didn't exist. Do you want, everything I gave you was gospel truth and it all came from the Holy Spirit. Don't be ignorant of Satan. So that we should not be outwitted by Satan, for we are not ignorant of his schemes. 1 John 5.18, the evil one can't touch you. But he who was born of God protects him. And the evil one does not touch him. So you understand? You, you have to break these curses, cast out these demons... Confess with your mouth that Jesus is your Lord and Savior and, 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 and clean up your life. Clean up your life. You've got to stop doing all these things that you know. You know now they're wrong, that they're an abomination before God. You know they're wrong. Now you've got to stop it. Now you've got to stop it. But he who was born of God, the, the, these, are the, these are the people who who are what is said are born again. Do you understand? That means deliverance. That doesn't mean saying the sinner's prayer and then you continue, go playing with your tarot cards. That's not what it means. It means you have deliverance. You've casted out these demons. You've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you live a holy life. And you do the work of the cross, which means you help others get delivered. It is this person that the evil one does not touch. Ephesians 6, 12. We don't fight flesh. We fight spiritual forces, which is also what you've heard me saying to you. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Ephesians 6.10, be strong in the Lord's mighty power. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Ephesians 6.14-17, 6, the armor of God. Now, this is going to describe exactly what the armor of God is. Stand firm then with the, with the belt of truth. Okay, someone who's constantly pathological lying, they're not coming from God, sorry. When you come from God, you are a truth teller. You are a truth teller. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness when you're told that the Bible says that tarot cards are wrong, you don't tell everybody that, that the person who told you that is just trying to start trouble. I, I didn't make it up. I read it right from the Bible. There is no righteousness over there either. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist 
with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. And that is what she's throwing over here is the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. Amen. Proverbs 30, 30, chapter 30, verse 5. Take refuge in God. Every word of God is flawless. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Colossians 1, 13. You aren't in darkness, you're in Jesus. He has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of his beloved son. Amen. Luke 10, 19, nothing will harm you. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, greater is he in you. But you belong to God, my dear children. You have already won a victory over those people. Because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. Who lives in the world? Who is the ruler of the world? This is why we are told that we must be in the world, but we should never be of the world. Who is the ruler of the world? It is Satan. First John, second chapter, 13th verse. You have overcome the evil one. I am writing to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I am writing to you, young men, because you have overcome the evil one. I write to you, children, because you know the father. First John 5, 4. You have overcome the world. See, that this has so much more meaning to me. I hope it does to you now. Overcome the world. You see, when I was learning with Nisargadatta, overcoming the world to me meant overcoming ego, overcoming the psychological mind. It is so much more than that and so much deeper than that. It is overcoming Satan. Satan is the one who started all this on this on this earth here with this psychological mind. Remember I said when consciousness knew that it was separate, the world appeared at the same time. That was Satan. That was why consciousness knew it was separate from the source. That was Satan. That's why Jesus said he had overcome the world. He had overcome Satan. So 1 John 5, 4, you have overcome the world. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Luke 10, 17, demons bow to the name of Jesus. And that is, I can't even tell you how true that is. I cannot even tell you how true that is. It's, it's. I just cannot even tell you how true that is. The 72 returned with joy saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Psalm 9111. He will command his angels to guard you. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. And which is what happened. Do you guys remember what I told you? Well, now it all makes sense that I, that, I, that I understand that from the beginning, from the dark night of the soul, because remember I told you, I cried out to God. I was, I was laying on the floor crying, screaming at the top of my lungs to God to either take me home or make this pain stop. I will do anything if he makes this pain stop. And uh, he put me through a four-year dark night of the soul. And from that moment, the Holy Spirit was here with me. So the verse says, 
for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all of your ways. And remember when Nithya Nanda sent this thing here to hurt me. It hurt my liver for three days. The pain was very, very bad. Hurt my liver for three days. On the third, on the third night, I was laying in my bed. And I didn't know what to do for this. And uh, that's when I told you another being came. One hand went on my liver. Uh, liver's on the right side of your body. One hand was on my liver and the other hand was put on my right kidney. And the being healed me. The being healed me. So I am protected by angels. Do you understand everything I've experienced and told you guys that you guys all thought I was a looney tune because you're listening to that demon out there. Here it is in scripture. I'm reading it to you in scripture. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all of your ways. And that's the last one on here. So I want you guys to understand the spiritual world is real and it's not only energy. There are true spiritual beings that are roaming the earth looking for bodies to inhabit, to wreak havoc, to drag you away from Jesus Christ. That's it. That's their only goal. It's a head count. It's a head count. It is spiritual warfare. So no, um, the, you know, as I said, somebody who somebody who's genuine and honest and spiritual, when, when they hear that they've been doing something wrong and it's and it's gotten from a legitimate source like the Bible, when, when they're genuine and honest and righteous. Um, they will start to begin to change their ways, not fight against it. And that is what that demon is doing. And the thing that upsets me the most here is that she's deceiving all of you. She can't do anything to me. I am untouchable. She can't do anything to me. But she is deceiving all of you. This is what's getting me very upset here. So I want you to have these Bible verses because no doubt you've got the demons in you already. If you're suffering with mental illness, anxiety, depression, anything like fibromyalgia, rheumatoid arthritis, autoimmune disorders, uh, migraine headaches, these are all coming from these demons. She's got it herself. Fibromyalgia, um, back problems, arthritis. This is why she's still taking her clonopin and her oxycodone. And she's supposed to be a realized being. She's a liar from hell. She is a liar from hell. And she is deceiving all of you. She can read from the Bible all she wants. But she has got 20 years of video out here to show what kind of a liar she is. These demons are, are not are not imaginary and I want you to understand that they're not imaginary this is why I've been posting these deliverances so that you can see it this is why I posted that situation that happened with Lance when he was playing with that Ouija board what happened to him this stuff is real this stuff is real so hang on to these Bible verses and you say them out loud if you need to, if you feel like you have to. And if you're going through any of these illnesses, mental illness, anxiety, um, autoimmune diseases, say these prayers. And just say with authority, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I command you to get out of this form. This is not your home. You do not live here. You are not welcome here. All soul ties, curses, generational curses are broken. I renounce it. I break it and renounce it. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to get out, get out, get out, up and out, up and out in the name of Jesus. And you just keep saying that. Do not be surprised. 
If you start getting pain in your throat, pain in your jaw, you start coughing, you start vomiting, all of these things will happen. And this is because understand, you are not this form. This is our house also. This is our house. We are residing in this house and understand this, while we're in this form, there are five layers to us. We also have a spirit form here. It's not just energy. Don't listen to that demon over there who doesn't know what she's talking about. We are not just energy. Not while we are in the form. And in the earth realm, on the earth realm, these demons are not just energy. You guys must understand this. Have a blessed night.